Welcome to the land of no easy answers. Our world, though more connected than ever, seems to have forgotten how to connect. Everywhere you look, the disconnect is obvious, from nature to the people around us, and even within ourselves. This is Alex Knight, and thank you for joining us as we attempt to unravel the mysteries of the mind and your universe. Now let's meet our panel. Over in one corner is Kristen Rumor. Hello. And in the other corner, Aaron Stewart. Well, hello there. There he is in beautiful putrid green for some reason. <laughs> Because he wanted some contrast. Uh, you picked this color for me, and now you're calling it I'm putrid. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I was going more Emerald City. Exactly. There we Emerald go. Emerald yes, City. I am, I am the wizard. I'm choosing a magical way. Don't look behind the curtain. Yes. All right. So today we are doing two, uh, the second part of our Mental Health Awareness Month special. And we decided today that we are going to try to focus more on some tips Um related to uh to health uh like nutrition uh, and that sort of thing and i think aaron had some things to say on that aaron well just getting to the idea that you know from previous episodes we pointed out that the only way to create neurogenesis like the, the only way to actually regrow brain cells inside your head is through exercise right it's it's the you have to plug plug or pump plug plug more blood pump more blood into the brain uh, yeah. which allows your brain to grow. That's the only way that we figured out to do it. Everything else like diet, everything else is, is helpful and, and, you know, benefits us. But it's really that exercise, I think, where, where a lot of people just don't realize how much of an effect that has on your mental health or the lack thereof. Gotcha. Mm. And what uh, have you done in your life recently? Because we we talked about some of this stuff off camera the other day. So why don't you tell people uh, what you've been doing well i mean i used to be 300 pounds uh right? there's I that mean, yeah right? i used to sit behind a desk so i i feel you i know how hard how easy it is to let that just grow on you and how again like once i started to look at it as more like the disease that it is where it's an insidious thing and your body grows used to those extra pounds and so you just you know assuming more of the your natural state essentially just changes as you ratchet things up hey and so after time it becomes again that loop inside your brain of i can't fix this so this just me must be who i am right instead of again giving yourself the agency to be able to say no if i just made a couple little changes i could probably drag myself out of this and again gotcha. finding a you know a support group to be able to help you achieve that right uh we talked about on the last episode about you know if you set yourself the goal of losing 50 pounds well how do you how do you get there right all right? those what micro the micro that? steps yeah yeah but if you only look at the grand goal it's very easy to get lost in that you know, without Absolutely. having those clear, you know, small goals to climb onto. Yeah. You know, you have to have those steps. You can't just jump up the cliff or from the bottom. You have to actually, right? Because again, it was the same problem of when I got myself up to that weight, I had to again bring myself down. It's not something, it didn't happen overnight, me getting there. Of course not. And so you have to treat it the same way of, of ratcheting yourself back. But I feel so much better. Now, and that's been the kind of the, what I try to get across to people is that it's not, you know, I'm not attacking you in any way. I understand that inside your brain, that's what this feels like is an attack because, you know, that's that's our, our emotion pain and our physical pain are in the same spot, you know. So this is where we try to create this separate, you know, uh, conversation to be had with not you, the person who has allowed this to happen, but you, the person who has the agency to change it. Yes. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, going to mental health month, you know, this, this is a real, uh, big thing for everyone, I think. And, and we should really pay attention to this as it, as it happens and, and really just take that moment of self-reflection and just try to figure out, you know, like how can my journey help someone else? You know, how can what I've had go, you know, had to go through in my life and the, the changes I've had to make, the things that I've had to do, how could that, you know, help someone else who's going through maybe so, exactly the same thing? You know, uh, you look at the idea that it's not just, you know, you aren't just you right now. You're the combination of all the other yous that came before, you know, and therefore also the combination of all the yous to come. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I'm glad you brought up, you know, we, we talked about in part one, we talked a lot about, about habits and it's, it's so, it's so challenging to, especially if you do want to do something radically different, like, you know, you acknowledged, okay, I'm not healthy. I don't feel well. I need to drop this weight. And you had to, you had this big goal, but then you had to figure out all of the steps in between, like, okay, well, mm -hmm. how do I actually get there? Mm -hmm. How do I realistically get there? And it's so difficult when we get stuck, you know, we find ourselves stuck in these patterns, in these loops, and it's so hard to get out of it. And that's why I can't emphasize that enough, that it is so crucial to, if you want to get out of that, you do need to break this down. You do need to write this down and figure out, okay, well, if I want to lose whatever your your weight goal is, if it's 300 pounds, well, how do I get there? Okay, so I got to get a gym membership. Well, okay, well, how much time do I actually have to commit? And then also, what's my diet like? So you got to start looking at all these different things, right? Even just breaking it down smaller than that, like going yeah. back to just the importance of exercise on mental health, it's simply just move your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't need to be, a, oh, I need to go out for a big run or hit the gym or whatever it is. Just move your body, get the blood flowing. And it's kind of yeah. like everything else, right? Once we get all clogged up and we're talking about mental health issues, it, it is just kind of like a big clog in the brain, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? So in order to start flushing that out, you just simply need to get it moving, right? Start sending some water down that drain, whatever it is, right? Yeah. So if that's all you can do is do three jumping jacks, you know, just something to get that blood pumping up to your brain. That's going to help with what you were saying, Aaron, in, in the neurogenesis, just getting that blood up there. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly, I'm, I'm like absolutely just flabbergasted by the number of people that get to an escalator and choose to just stop mm -hmm. on an escalator. What are you trying as to say? As if the escalator wasn't meant to <laughs> help you move faster and you could just treat it like stairs <laughs> and you could walk up those stairs and you would get to where you were going even faster instead of just like you just, and I, I love uh, Henry Rollins put it best. He said, it's the humans on display. Mm. <laughs> right where it's the moving walkway and everybody just gets you know they run up to this walkway and then they stop and just go oh thank god i get to rest <laughs> all those steps to get to this moving walkway and thank god they put this walkway here so i don't have to walk the extra 15 <laughs> steps to get to the end of, right like instead yeah. of just treating that as a method to move yourself faster well, you know, the you great know, it's, like, it's like most things that are designed to make our lives easier that are actually sure. really harming us both physically mm -hmm. and mentally. Right. So that being one of them, it's nothing in theory wrong with, you know, if you're working a tough job and you're physical all day to stop and let an escalator take you up the stairs. I mean, that would be great. But in reality, a lot of us now are not in those types of situations. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yet our minds and our bodies go, well, this is easier. Yeah. So obviously yep. I'm going to take that route. Right. Same as I'm going to stop at McDonald's and get drive through instead of making myself a nice meal. And we can all sit and look at it and go, well, how can these people keep doing that and not realize it's bad for them? And we just hit this point of convenience and it seems to almost not override, but it, it makes our brains more likely to, to follow up with easier things in the future. It makes us lazy, so to speak. Absolutely. And I don't mean that in accusatory, you're lazy sort of way. It's just how our brains are designed, path of least mm -hmm. resistance, you know? Exactly. And that, that I think, gets to the heart of this as well, is that, you know, our brains want to use as little energy as possible, mm -hmm. right? When you get down to, like, the breakdown of energy output during your day, your brain uses up two-thirds of the energy mm -hmm. that, you, that you use during a day. Your brain, just the thought of, of moving your stuff around is, is generating so much, right, is causing you to burn so much energy over the course of a day that a lot of people just don't realize that, you know, it's it's not this that's the important part, it's this. You know, and if you're not treating this well, you're, you're going to have inevitable issues with the rest of it. You know, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an interesting paradox as well, right? If we kind of take that path of least resistance in our brains to conserve energy, mm. well, it happens to then put a strain on other parts of our bodies. Exactly. Right. So it's less energy to just eat a, you know, prepared 
meal than to cook for yourself. Well, I mean, yeah, sure, that's easier to think about, but now that's going to take a toll on your other systems, mm -hmm. which then play back into to your mind. Um, and that's something we wanted to talk about in this episode is the relationship between the gut and the brain. And there's a lot of research now coming out on what you're putting into your body is directly affecting your mental health. Of course. Um, so that's a big part of it. And you don't think about it when it's all convenience. Um, but it's all in how you treat yourself as well. Right. And we touched on mm -hmm. this last episode. If you're putting things that you know are bad into your body, you are subconsciously telling yourself that that's what you're worth. Well, and that's the problem is that our brains easily convince us that it's not that bad. What are you talking about? It didn't kill me. Yeah. So it must not be that bad, right? And and our our brains are notoriously really really bad at long term planning. <laughs> and that's where <laughs> and that's where this becomes a problem. We like to think that we oh we got this figured out. We know exactly what we're going to be doing ten years from now. Nope. Mm -mm. Do not. Right. Yeah. There's just no way that we can do that. So you, and you, that's again, so we convince ourselves that we've got this, but but in reality, we're being led to. Like when you make a bad decision and your brain goes, that's next month's guy's problem. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the same thing with, with them, yeah. you know, going for fast food, all of these, you know, decisions that we know mm -hmm. inside our heads are, are not the best thing for us. Mm -hmm. But like we we justify it and our brains are really good at finding excuses for and, and it becomes this, you know, again, loop inside our brains that that's what we fall back to because our brains don't want to take the time to rework that alternative. Well, it's also the immediate gratification, which Absolutely. is what our culture is probably yep. defined by at this point, <laughs> realistically. Yeah, right. Basically. I want this now because mm -hmm. you get that immediate. Who doesn't want a McDonald's cheeseburger? Yeah, yep. they're delicious. It's great. You know, but future Kristen, half an hour from now, is going to be like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why did <laughs> I do that? Terrible. Well, you yeah. know, and also, too, I mean, look, I mean, we all, you, you got to live, too, but everything in, in moderation, right? You know, a lot of something can do damage over a, a long period of time, but a little bit of something here and then, you know, now and again, it's not really going to be that big of a deal, but, um, you know, I, well, I, I've heard that it can take 90 days to develop a new habit. Okay, sorry, I want to go back so, to that. Okay, sorry, sure, to, go ahead. continue okay. on that. Yeah, please because do. going back to the, the gut-brain connection, right? Like what you were talking about, Kristen, with the McDonald's causing you to go, ugh, right? Most people don't realize that's a cognitive load on your brain. And so there's a, they found a direct connection between your gut and your brain. So if your gut is sending signals that it's got something in it that it doesn't like, that is affecting your brain. And that is affecting your brain health because it's taking away your, your ability to focus. It's taking away, right? Like you're unable to really, you know, concentrate if part mm -hmm. of you is, is worried about this thing moving through your, ugh. Right. Mm -hmm. And the amount and of energy it takes yeah. to process that as well. Um, exactly. And there's, you know, a, a lot of cultures kind of look at that, you know, how fast things move through you as an indicator of how good they are for you and <laughs> how much of a drain they are on your energetic yeah. system. Yeah. Right. So if you're eating something that's um, heavily modified um, or, you know, heavy kind of meat products, they can take anywhere between 24 and sometimes up to 72 hours to pass mm -hmm. through, depending on your individual system, mm -hmm. right? And it kind of works down from there. So then you've got more, you know, like kind of chicken, fish can take, you know, 12 to 36 hours. If you're going now fruits and vegetables, if they're cooked, maybe 12. And then if things are raw, they're the ones that seem to pass through with the least amount of, um, of resistance to it. So if you think of the energetic toll that you're, putting on your body by what you're putting into it. Yeah. Um, and of, of course, like you mentioned, Aaron, that's taking it away from, from your brain, from doing mm -hmm. other things, right? Because your energy is now focused on this thing that your body doesn't necessarily want there. Yeah. Right? And now they're finding that they're actually learning, instead of treating dementia and all of these mental issues with drugs, they're finding it more effective to treat it with nutrition. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's been a lot of integration on that. Right in the mental health mm -hmm. uh, field, 
and I'm, integrating nutrition that that hasn't been looked at until no, fairly recently. No, and this yeah. actually, I and fiber especially apparently is a big one. That, I, that the more fiber you can put in, the better your body apparently can can process itself. I find this especially frustrating as somebody who cares about nutrition nutrition and is interested in it. I mean, I'm I'm. Uh, you know, just just a hobbyist and someone who likes to to learn about this stuff, but also somebody who's had a family member who's had Parkinson's and then dementia, and who's, you know, I I don't, I'm always frustrated with just accepting that there's no way to actually imp improve someone's life, because mm -hmm. my grandmother was they just. The doctor, and she saw so many different doctors, and they just like here, try this pill, try this medication. Yep. Take, you yep. know, taking like a cocktail of different things, you know. And I just, I, no one ever talks about nutrition. I never heard about diet. I never heard from yep. the doctors about uh, like, okay, well, is she is she deficient in any kind of vitamins? I mean, yeah. you know, it, look, I, and I get it. It's, it's hard to exercise too, especially if your body is falling apart on you and you can't even walk, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, you, well. you don't, I don't really hear a lot of discussions, a lot of research into, well, how does, how does the nutrition angle factor into, mm -hmm. to these actual conditions that a portion of society will encounter at some point in their older age, mm -hmm. right? What can we, like, I don't understand why more people are not talking about this. There's a lot more coming out now, but mm -hmm. I think the issue is how to get there, right? Everyone listening to this goes, well, of course, we know we need to eat better and exercise well, but how do we do it? And then you also need to look at the socioeconomic mm -hmm. factors there because it's difficult to eat well. It's expensive to yeah. eat well. Um, well... It, it definitely can be right, it's, and that's it's something more, we need more to energy acknowledge. For like they've done studies, and like to eat vegetables is actually cheaper, but it's more that you have to make it yourself, and that adds like inside your brain that adds expense to yeah, it. Absolutely, right? I think part of the big lie too, with um, not necessarily lie, but one of the the things that we fall prey to as shoppers is. Uh, you know, all the end caps in the aisles, you know, like all these sugary snacks, all these other stuff. When you actually start to, when you start to avoid all that stuff in between those aisles and just stick with the, the, you know, fresh vegetables and poultry and all that sort of stuff and get rid of the heavily processed stuff, right? Get rid of the sugar, get rid of the heavy carbohydrates, uh, get rid of all that stuff and just stick to a lot of greens and, you know, occasionally some meat. Uh, you actually save a lot of money because you're not buying the sugary snacks. You're not buying yep. the crackers. You're not buying the potato chips. You're not snacking all the time. And you actually find that when you make these major changes, when you start radically changing your diet and, and just purging your body of all this shit, you start to realize that you actually feel better. You're yeah. you're dropping calories because you're not eating the same amount of stuff, and also you're saving money because you're not buying. You're not just buying all the stuff that you see in the aisles, right? Mm -hmm. There's something to well, that. Well, if you don't realize that, you know, ninety to ninety-five mm -hmm. percent of the food that's in your supermarket is processed and sugar and generally not great for you. You know, you start to really question, you know, the motivations behind a lot of this. You know, is it really for my nutrition that they're doing this or is it just basically for money? You know? Right. Um, and so, you know, the idea of just a, a fresh, you know, fruit and vegetable diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, you know, I know a lot of guys, you know, I do construction. Right. And so I know a lot of guys who are just like, get that green thing off my plate. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and they'll only eat meat and it's, it's, or potatoes, right? Potatoes, not a vegetable, <laughs> right? But, you know, the problem again becomes an issue of down the road. If we're not good at this long-term planning, we know that eating those things is not beneficial to us in the long term, mm -hmm. but our brain convinces us that it's fine for now. I'll deal with it tomorrow, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? But then when tomorrow comes, you know, and, and again, the doctor without asking why 
you have this issue, just wants to give you pills, always seemed like the wrong approach. You know, mm-hmm. they give you a pill, but they never give you the out, you know, like they know what the problem is. They know that you're, you're obese and you have this, this thing that you need to get rid of this, this little baby that you're carrying around. Mm-hmm. Right. But instead of just telling you that, you know, we've gotten used to this idea of a magic pill mm-hmm. and it, yeah. it just doesn't exist. Right. Well, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about of, uh, the path of least resistance. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So everything is. And to tie it into our last episode, um, when we were talking about how do you choose to spend your energy, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking specifically about, you know, being distracted by devices and things as opposed to doing, quote unquote, healthier um, activities. Um, But it's kind of a similar concept when it comes to nutrition, right? So it seems like it might be a higher energy expenditure to prepare your food, right? To buy vegetables, cut it up. And your mind might say, well, you don't have time for that, right? You've only got time to get this quickly prepared meal. And you're not really paying attention to the fact that that energy is still being spent just yeah. in other places that might yeah. not be so yeah. good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's unfortunately, as you mentioned, spilled into the healthcare system when there's a pill for everything, Right. So it's much easier to just say, well, this will work, you know, take this path of least resistance, energy saved. But in reality, it's going to take more energy to now break that down. You haven't addressed the actual root problem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So how do you want to address? How do you want to spend your energy? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we see this all the time. Like when I I don't watch cable, I don't have cable TV. So I'm sure there are still commercials for sugary cereals. But when I was a kid. You know, in the 80s, you know, Fruit Loops, uh, Frosted Flakes, you know, this stuff, no, they, they, they market those, this stuff to appeal to kids. <laughs> they, they create cartoon characters, right? And of course, as a kid, you're like, oh, I gotta have Frosted Flakes. I gotta, I gotta have Fruit Loops. You know, and it's <laughs> just, it's just store. garbage. Mm-hmm. It's most cereals are not good for you. They're not real food. It's just carbohydrate sugar crap. Mm-hmm. Right. And what's scary now is the amount of packaging that's trying to trick you into thinking it's good mm-hmm. for you. Right. So like a prepackaged meal that's like, oh, uh, fat free, no sugar. Well, that's another right? lie so, too, the fat free thing. Absolutely. It's, when it's, when it's you still there that, just in a different way. Yeah. And it's when you realize that when they say like iron fortified, it means that they sprinkled iron shavings into the mix. Right. And it's nothing that your body can use. Your body can't take that kind of iron that they put into it, but it's there. And yeah. so they get to put it on the on the box as iron fortified, right? <laughs> Despite the fact it being of no use to you whatsoever. You know, and, and that's how they kind of trick you with a lot of these things is, is, you know, they put these big flashy words on it. And if nobody ever actually like reads the fine print, like, oh, wait, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so. Well, they have to like, add all this. If you just look at uh, pick up Frosted Flakes or just I'll pick on any specific, any, it doesn't matter, any sugary cereal. You, you look at the list of ingredients. They have to, you know, put all this extra stuff. They have to pump it full of all these extra vitamins. Because people will realize if they didn't do that, it's really just, there's not much in there, man. There's just like, it's just. It's cardboard and sugar. Yeah. Mm. It's, well, it's just, <laughs> it's just pure. It's, it's just wheat. Barley. Well, just think and, about the days before we even started putting nutrition labels on things. But it's not even, the thing is not, not, you know? not to say that wheat is necessarily always a, a, a bad thing, but it's, well, if you you're know, gluten intolerant, it sure it, is. It is, it can it can be, but I'm just saying, even as something simple as let's just say making bread, right? Yep. You look at a loaf of I don't, I don't know, let's say um, uh, Wonder Bread or something like that, and you look at all yeah, the extra stuff. The you read all the ingredients, <laughs> and you're and you can't even pronounce the stuff. And like, what is all this stuff? And you realize that a lot of this stuff doesn't actually need to be made. Like it, it doesn't need to be in the bread. If you were to make mm-hmm. bread at home, bread needs very little ingredients. You don't need all this other extra stuff that they add in there, right? And um, that's that's part of the uh, that's part of the issue with when we talked about processed foods, right? Processed wheat. It's all going through a process. You can buy bread that uses whole grains. Uh, that do- you can buy bread that doesn't even use flour, where they're actually using all of the 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 whole the grain the whole grain they're basically crushing it and using that to make the bread right so it doesn't 
the it's the, the you can you there are ways to make bread that is more it is it is more healthy than than the average loaf of bread right so but again it's they charge more money for it because it takes more time mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so going back to it's more expensive. Yeah, it can be more expensive to eat healthier too, but you can mm -hmm. also just like, I love bread. Look, I, I, I come from a European background. I, I absolutely love a fresh piece of bread, but I also acknowledge that it's maybe not necessarily the greatest thing to always eat, uh, you know, especially not a lot of. So I try to, to minimize, let's say the number of, uh, you know, carbohydrates that I'm putting in my body so again it's just it's just why i'm not you don't have to calorie count i don't believe in that but i do believe believe in in taking a holistic approach to things and just mm -hmm. you know what it's it's this stuff isn't that difficult right to me i've made being able to maintain a consistent body weight for the last decade and it's real simple i just really minimize the the number of things that i eat that are processed the the sh the amount of sugar um and you know i only typically I, most days i only eat two meals i don't eat i don't even eat three meals i don't eat lunch and mm -hmm. that took a bit of an, an adjustment but i make sure i start the day with a really good breakfast this is what works for me i'm not advocating everyone copy what i'm doing but i'm just saying uh for me what works is having a really solid breakfast and then I'm, I don't really snack. I don't eat anything during the day. I just drink a lot of coffee and water and I'm working my <laughs> way up to dinner. So that, that's, that's what works for me. And I've been able to maintain a really mm -hmm. consistent, uh, body weight. But again, yeah, it's the constant. Every time I talk to somebody that's been struggling with weight, I look, I ask them what, what they're, what they're doing. And it's not even that they're not getting any kind of physical activity. It's, it's the constant snacking right the constant <laughs> potato potato chips and soda the, okay, oh god okay. don't even get me started start. on soda i need to i need to show this right here right here i'm going to bring this okay. up on the screen here this this word right here what is japanese. that kuchi sabishi kuchi sabishi -e. it's a japanese word for when you're not hungry but you eat because your mouth is lonely <laughs> <laughs> right and i was just like that's oh perfect God, that's perfect that that's perfect. absolutely perfect i'm not hungry but i just need to have something yeah going i just gotta, I just gotta have some that's just yeah yeah it becomes uh, like <laughs> a it's a, like a habit a reflex. that's developed yep. like anything else right and that's exactly i just went oh that's brilliant that is <laughs> right great. but that's yeah like my my weight loss journey basically started with taking the food that was on my plate and eating half of it there you go it's a math right? problem but it was, it was just that changeover inside my head that I used to grab the big plate and then fill it, you know? And if you don't think about that and just go, hey, wait, maybe that's too much, right? Like apparently you're only supposed to have about a fist, amount, the fist size of food at any point. Eating more than that actually costs you more energy to, to digest that than, well, than you actually your gain. your stomach problem. is, right? Yeah. And that's that, the thing. So, yeah. you know, you go, you know, I grew up with Bonanza and these like smorgasbord places and we'd go and, you know, load up every Sunday. Right. And, and so you get used to this idea of, of food being this comfort zone and this is a, you know, our family meets here and we like to eat. Right. It's just what we do. You know, I don't know why he was Italian, but <laughs> <laughs> although it's, it's kind of somewhat of an Italian thing. So maybe that was just the, the trigger in my brain, but I, uh, you know, it's again equating those things with with emotional content mm -hmm. instead of it's looking a bit at of a messy it one with food because it's yeah. such a basic instinct right mm -hmm. and it's something that we do share and it yeah. brings us together and so it does get a little bit muddled up um and it goes back in my opinion to what we were talking about before this disconnect between actually just being with ourselves yeah. So I know a lot of people listening would, you know, probably just, oh, I know I need to change my habits, but how do I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what I think the like? biggest thing to start is just assess how does this actually make you feel right? You can't make any change until you sit with yourself, right? Honestly, and feel how, how you feel in your own body. Yeah. Right. So just taking notes even, okay, I ate this. How do I honestly feel about it? Right. Because until you reconnect that part of yourself, you know, your brain and your body, you're going to have a rough time making any changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People uh, ask me all the time, like when they're always surprised and 
sometimes shocked when I tell them that I only eat two meals a day and they always say the same thing. How do you do it, man? How do you do it? And I always say the same thing. I just, I, I just sucked it up and I just did it and it was very difficult. It was a weird adjustment going from three meals down to two meals a day. And yes, it is hard. It takes many, many weeks to get adjusted to it. And after, you know, of doing it for, like once I pushed through that, first 30 days and I got so used to it and I've been doing it for years now. And to me, mm -hmm. it's not even something I think about. It's not even an issue anymore for me. And again, I'm just going to say, uh, f disclosure, I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not advocating yeah. that people copy my diet. This is what works for me, but I'm, I'm someone that likes to experiment. And so sometimes I experiment with uh, interstitial uh, fa fasting, um, you know. Intermittent? Um, interstitial. Intermittent. Thank you. <laughs> I that's get where what, you're going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ooh, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, intermittent fasting, you know, I've experimented with that. Uh, you know, I've tried doing the real ultra low carb diet where it's almost no carbs. And that worked okay for a while. And I dropped quite oh, too much weight, actually. Um, so I had to make some adjustments there. So I do like experimenting, but for me, it's like anything when, a, when trying to develop a new habit, you have to do it hard. You have to be consistent and you got to do it for a long time and it takes adjustment. You just have to do it. And over time you will adjust and you will develop new habits. But like I said earlier, it can take a while. It can take several months for your brain to really get used to that to that new habit, and to actually make it a habit, right? I just so want to add to be sorry, doing yeah. it for yourself as well. And that's something we were talking about yes, earlier yeah. is, you know, this need to have an appearance to, you know, and that's why fad diets never work. And, you know, if you're doing it to try and fit in or to have this ideal body image, right, throw all that out the window, yeah. right? The only reason you're doing this is for you because yep. you want to be the healthiest version of yourself. It's the only body, only brain you have, and you want it to probably last as long as it can, I would think, right? Yeah. So make that the priority. Yeah, we only have a short time here, so why not have the best time that you could have, right? And I just feel like, you know, again, we need to start looking at this as an actual disease. It's not, you know, it's it's something that's that's a sickness that we need to deal with, right? And And again, it's not to diminish the whole process of getting here or anything. But again, it's just, if you start to look at it that way, then you might be able to see some optimism for a treatment, mm -hmm. you know? And that's my main point is that, you know, you need to look at this like an athlete. An athlete, when they're getting ready for a race, has already run that race a hundred times inside their head. They've actually trained their muscles by doing that to run that race better. And it's the same thing inside our heads. If we, if we sit and think of ourselves as a big full fatty, then no, of course, we're never going to get anywhere. But if you start to change your mindset of go, no, that's not me. That's who I might express right now. But that's not, you know, I'm, I'm inside here, someone who mm -hmm. takes more agency and has this control. So that was where like even the half food thing was just me taking control over that and really just looking at how much I was actually shoveling into my face, yeah. you know, and, and having that moment of self-respection of, oh, OK, wait, <laughs> maybe I did lead myself down this merry path. And, and again, have the control to change it, I, but only by thinking of it positively, right? I do have a problem with this relatively new thing of, um, and I'm not saying body, like we should body shame, but I do have a problem with this concept of, oh, you got to love yourself for who you are and I am yeah. who I am. And I'm, because to me, that just seems like a cop out. If you're, th if you're or obese, if you're over 300 pounds and to just look in the mirror and tell yourself, oh, I love my body and I, I am who I am. And I, I it's just, I, to me, I, I can't accept that because you can change. You, you're not stuck in that body forever. You can make a change. You, you chose to eat the foods that you're eating. And to me, it angers me. It makes me mad when people feel mm -hmm. like they should just accept that. Because that's yeah, not healthy. A, I, I think it's a good thing that we have more kind of body positivity and inclusivity because we mm -hmm. are all different shapes and sizes. Um, but I 
I agree to a certain point. Yes. I mean, it shouldn't be used ever as an excuse or a cop out to, you know, eat whatever you want and get morbidly obese. Um, but the fact is some people will just naturally have a little bit extra. Yeah. Right. And that that is OK. Right. We're not all going to be lean, muscled gods and goddesses out there. Um, so it, it's a fine line. I definitely hear what you're saying, but. I, I wouldn't want to put any shame on that movement either, because I think we do all need to accept ourselves. And let's say you have gotten a bit out of hand, so you are even at a morbidly obese rate. You do need to kind of start with loving yourself if you're going to change that. Right. Well, so I agree with comes in. Yeah. I agree with that movement that you should be able to stand there and be like, you know, OK, yes, I have done this to myself. Mm -hmm. Um but I need to love all of this of me right now if I'm going to continue loving myself, which is going to be what gets me healthier. Okay, fair enough. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I agree. The shame, the shame spiral definitely doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you're just, you know, you got the, the putting food in your face just because you're lonely instead of actually looking at the food and going, why am I doing this? You know? Yeah. And, and does it benefit me to do it? You know? Uh yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough one. And that's again, like not to diminish anyone's struggle in any of this, right? Like I, I, I realize it's been a real, you know, hassle for me to get to this point of even where I am. And I still have enough to, you know, I still should get rid of more of this. Right. But again, I look at the health aspect of things. And again, the problem of like, if, if your if your body isn't healthy, your brain isn't able to function properly. And again, it's like important. that's that I think is a real problem that that we're not just not just not grasping is that brain to to stomach connection and the fact that if if you're filling your stomach with things that just aren't healthy for the brain, well, your brain isn't going to be healthy. It's just a right. It's just a logical progression, you know. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not a matter of like I love you, and that's my thing here. Like even if I'm saying to you that that maybe we could look at this weight thing, it doesn't mean that I don't love you and every part of you and everything that you are and every every inch of you, mm -hmm. right? But again, I love you enough to see that person outside of this and mm -hmm. to know that that's, this isn't you. This isn't you. You chose this to be you and mm -hmm. you have the choice of, of not being you. I do this with my face and my hair so that I can shave it all off at periods and just completely rewire me. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people just don't even have that even just, you know, like think about when you change your haircut. And how everybody, when you walk into work the next day, treats you just that little bit different. And it's like, oh, well, that's interesting, <laughs> right? But then the day after that, everything goes back to normal, <laughs> right? And so it's it's a matter of being able to just make those incremental changes and realizing that you're working towards a goal, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and again, those small changes of just take that half plate for today, right? You can always, or just take the half plate, only eat half of it and put the rest of it aside for later. That was my thing. I would just, you know, it's not that I was not taking the same amount of food. I would just put it aside for a couple of hours or so even, right? Yeah. Give your body some time to process this and then you can put the rest of it in, sure, right? Or you could have that discussion of, with yourself of whether you needed it in the first place. Yeah. You know? Aaron, <laughs> I like the mind-body connection thing. I think that's something we always mm -hmm. need to come back to. And, Absolutely. you know, on, on the... On the carrying on the 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 idea of um, you know if you are if you if you are not happy with where you are weight wise if you don't feel good if you you know it's one of the things we always got to think about too how is this act if it like is this actually affecting my life too right mm -hmm. let's just think it about does. all like it this does. is a being obese creates other problems right like yep. we have a real issue with type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. right in north america and that's not going away anytime soon <clears throat> and we can link that back to diet right you look at and yeah. of course there are there are skinny people that that have diabetes too and there are things you know where you know can can get passed on through your dna from one person to another but but we do need to i think keep track and not lose sight of what other complications are going to be created because I've gone down this path of not treating myself well, that I'm not taking care of myself. Now I'm tired every time I can't do my job properly. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling stressed out. I'm feeling, uh, I'm, I, I, maybe I am depressed because I'm thinking about my weight. I'm thinking about, are, are people judging me? Are people looking at me differently? Are, is this affecting my relationships? Like there's a multitude of things that can be 
compounded by the the health problem there. Mm-hmm. Well, and then let's let's look at this fact too: is that someone is paying for that? Yeah. Our healthcare system, sure. While while already Overloaded. starting to get overworked, is going to only have more issues the more right. we don't take control right. of this. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's the other problem here. Is that again, I look at this as an optimistic thing, right? Like my, my problem here is it's a it's a thing of entitlement, right? Like uh, back in the day, the fat people were were the ones that were prosperous, right? And that was a, a status thing. And and I don't know if we need these kind of status things anymore. When you know, there's obviously issues with other people not having this. You know, and again, just having that part of your, you know, that that self reflection reflection to actually look at, you know, like, you know, how many other people don't have this, you know, and so for me to be taking more than my share became a real kind of, you know, like, oh, wait a minute for me, you know, like maybe I didn't need to have that so that someone yeah. else might get it. Yeah. And think you about know? like the the impact that we make as individuals with our own decisions on like you said the healthcare system is already overloaded and you, you know i i i i know people that have been diagnosed as pre-diabetic and luckily they caught it in time and doctors like doctors today know that you can you can <laughs> prevent and reverse the start of that by cha- yeah. make by just getting healthy again by taking care of yourself and think about if you do that if you make that positive change think about how that trickles down into well now I'm one less person that is going to be burdening the healthcare system also I don't have yeah. to deal with the insurance companies I don't have yep. to pay for the the uh, the medication and and yep. to be to get to give myself a shot for the rest of my mm-hmm. fucking life because I'm I've I've become mm-hmm. diabetic because of choices poor choices I've made in my life, right? So all of those things, like there is a chain reaction. There are consequences to things that we also do as well that affect all other aspects of our lives and society as well. And that's the thing, like there's there's so many stories out there of people who have completely lost all of these diseases by simply making changes to their diet and exercise routine, you know? So many of these things that we have, you know, feel like these overwhelming problems, but they really break down to pretty simple things. Eat more fiber. Apparently having an apple half an hour before you eat food or your, or your meals helps a lot because that extra fiber yeah. and you've allowed it to pre-digest helps your, the rest of the food to go through you, right? You're able to digest it better. You get more nutrients out of it. It, it basically is just a better, pro, better thing for your body, right? But it's those little changes, you know, and again, if you don't know these things, if you didn't realize that that you're being led down this merry path because it says right there, it's good for me. Look right there. See, it says. Mm-hmm. Right. But that's a marketing tool. Mm-hmm. And if you don't recognize that they did that for a purpose and maybe they're selling you that because what's inside it isn't really good for you in the first place. And so they had to make this change to make you feel like it was good. Hey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> instead of just having an apple. I'm going to have you an know? apple right after this show. <laughs> I was, I was, that was, that was exactly where I was going with that. I was going right, to, I was like, I got apples right back there. I was going to go have one right after this. But that's, that's the thing. It's, it's not an overwhelming thing. And that's the problem. Like it feels overwhelming if sure. you let it, Yeah. but it doesn't have to be. And, and again, like you made small changes to get to this point and you can make those small changes and roll it back. And I have faith in you. And that's what this is. I love you. And I, and I wish the best for all of you. And, and having come out of the other end of that, I can tell you it's better here. It is so much better having control over, you know, and again, I still got a few pounds, but I feel like I could control that. If I wanted to lose these, I know what I got to do, you know, and it's the same with you. You know what we got to do and and we're yeah. here for you. And it's, and, and again, find, find people to help you do, you know, but don't look at it as a despairing. I'll never be able to fix this because you can, you know, mm-hmm. and it's going to be tough. And that's my thing. Like I, I recognize none of this is easy, yeah. you know? And that's not supposed to be. And anybody that tells you that it is, is lying to you. They're just flat out lying to you. I'm sorry. There really just is no easy way other than the very simple truths that we know of our bodies like fruits and vegetables and they like exercise. You got to do the work. You got to do the work, pure and simple. And if you're looking for, you know, how do I even start? Because it is so overwhelming. As Mm -hmm. we've been saying, start small, right? It's every day just have I moved my body today and have I put something healthy in my body today. Mm-hmm. And 
It doesn't matter how big or how small those can be. That's just, that's where you yeah. start. And take right? those little victories and run. Absolutely. That's the other thing. Like, and that's it. Those, if you can only manage, like, if you can only manage five jumping jacks, yeah. that's yeah. all you managed today. But you but, did it. But be right? excited. You had you a did five jumping stick. jacks. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll right? be surprised how that will snowball, yeah, right? And if, yeah. if you're more of a visual person, you know, kind of I am, I find it very helpful to get things down on paper. Write it down, you know, if that's where you're starting from day one, how do you now feel after you did those five jumping jacks after you ate that carrot? And yeah, I do guarantee you consistently just do that one thing, right? Eventually, and it'll be different for everyone. Eventually, yeah. it will become more. If, Here's my challenge for everybody, actually. Okay, I just go had on. this brain idea. Everybody should start a little victories fund. Just grab a jar. And every time you have one of those little, hey, I did five jumping jacks, write it down. Throw it in your jar. Right? Yeah, and then every once that. in a while, you can pull out these little victories, these little things, that, like, just these little motivations to keep you going. Right? To remind you of what you're doing, why you're doing it. Right? Just take all those little things, just write them out and just put them in that jar. And you can watch that jar grow. And you'll be surprised how this will shrink with it. I like that. Eh? We Again, do gotta, you gotta, steps, you gotta, you gotta, have, you gotta keep track of this stuff too, because mm -hmm. it's impossible. There's so much going on in your daily life. You can't possibly keep it all in here, right? Uh, I read a great book by, you know, for those that are uh, interested in productivity. You know, if you've ever worked in an office, uh, David Allen's "Getting Things Done." book is um you know it's a bit of an older book now he's since revised it but the getting things done the gtd process is has made such an impact on my life and it's actually very very simple and it doesn't matter it can be applied to you um the the process can be applied to uh, electronic device or or you can do the the old paper pencil um um option but uh, th the fundamental thing about the gtd process is you need to do a brain dump and you can't be expected to keep it all up here yeah. right so you need to find a system whether that's a pen and paper system or an electronic system find a system where you dump all of that stuff and write things down so that you can mm -hmm. process that information and keep track of the stuff that needs to get done because you can't be expected to keep it all in, up here and if you try because i've tried you can't keep all the appointments that <laughs> and things you need to do up here oh boy you will set yourself up to fail yeah. big time yeah. 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 right yeah. so now i put everything in my calendar i've got my tasks i've got like i know like if i if there's a task that i gotta do i break it down i break it down by work and home Right. I keep those things separate and I also keep a, l a separate list of all the things that I can only do in my house. I have a list that's only for things that I can do at home. So I know this can only be taken care of at home. I can't do it at work. I can't do it while I'm at Starbucks. Has to be done at this specific location. There's a systematic way of doing it. That's helped me. But if, if there's one takeaway I can say with all this stuff, with uh with uh, nutrition and taking care of yourself to like what to your point aaron about these keeping track of these small little victories is just you you gotta you gotta keep track of it somehow right so you can actually look back to a high level overview 12 months later and go oh shit i actually accomplished all this stuff that's phenomenal mm -hmm. good for me right mm -hmm. yeah and the point there is you're worth it right again cycling back to that like the whole reason for doing all of this is because you are worth it you're worth making these changes to you because, again, like I recognize coming out of this, uh, it's much nicer to be here than to feel like your only option is there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, I just feel like a lot of people have lost their sense of empowerment. And I think that leads to a lot of these issues that we've been talking about here. And again, you know, coming back to mental health month. You know, the whole reason behind a lot of this, we, you know, we've led ourselves down these merry paths and forgotten that we have control. You know, and then we've let people convince us that, oh, you just take this pill and it'll all be better. And then when that pill doesn't help, well, that must be my fault. Hey, okay? yeah. And and I must have been, again, weak, failure, not able to right, not not complete, broken. Right. All these reasons inside your head, this little, you know, asshole inside your head who will sit here and convince you that you're the worst person ever if you let them. Uh. <laughs> right. 
But, you know, that's not the truth. That is not who you are. That's a part of our brains that can, again, lead us down this merry path if we let it. But we also have this other part of our brains that, you know, recognizes that you're worth it, right? You'll be, you'll feel better. You, everyone around you will feel better. Your, your finances will probably be better because you won't have to deal with all the pills and stuff that you have to take, right? Like you'll get outside and actually appreciate some nature every once in a while. Mm, mm-hmm. Crazy talk, you know? <laughs> like there's, there's just so many benefits to be had from this. And again, the only thing holding you back is unfortunately... Our old friend here. Yeah. You know? And and again, this idea of, you know, body positivity is is amazing, but you need to use that for something. Mm-hmm. Don't just consider that the end goal of being, oh, I guess that's me. <laughs> right? Because the, I always look at, I'm always trying to find the better me, you know? And, and I think that we all have a better us inside us. Well said. Yeah. So I couldn't have said it better health, myself. Mental health month, go find, you know, whatever, whatever we need to do. If it's a friend, if it's a therapist, you know, we all need that help sometimes. And I think that's the other point here as well, is that we need that help. Sometimes you can't do this alone. Sometimes you need to have a buddy to come running with you or to walk or to just, you know, when you stop at the escalator and, and stop, someone to just poke you a little bit and go, hey, why don't you just, you know? Yeah. And I think that's, that's again, you could take that as an enemy trying to de- you know destroy who you are or you could look at that as your best friend who's actually looking out for you and and loving you and trying to do what's best for you despite your objections <laughs> sometimes <laughs> right because again you know our brains will convince us that this is who we are very easily and and we'll allow that to just be the easy path without ever contemplating the idea that there is more to this yeah. and all the more reason to uh, you know we'll just end with all the more reason to seek out advice. And sometimes, you know, uh, it can be a challenge talking to family, right? And there are things, <laughs> there are things, I know that's an understatement, yeah. right? There are things that will, no, that's you know, crazy. <laughs> you should, you know, you, in every community, there's, there's, there's always, there's always help. Always, there's always mm-hmm. professional help available. You should always seek that out because there are things that you would say to a mental health professional that you would never say to your sister, to your mother, to your father, to your brother, right? Uh, it is challenging to talk about these things. Um, there could be a sell, uh, there can be a, a lot of embarrassment on your part to 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 want to talk about this stuff, right? Because again, you know, one of the words that I used that Kristen, you know, you uh, you told me is probably not the best term to use, but um, using the 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 word weakness to describe. Um, certain aspects of like uh, certain things of my personality when I when I make mistakes when I when I'm you know really hard on myself when I when I didn't do something right to consider it a weakness probably not the best term to use but you know it really can be difficult to talk about this stuff so yeah please do uh, look for professional help because it's out there it's waiting for you and uh, it will make a difference okay Thanks very much for joining us this week. If you're on YouTube, please drop a comment below. Let us know what you want to hear on a future episode. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, You can hit that subscribe button. Make sure you get every new episode each and every week. Of course, we release these on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, We always try to keep the content flowing. And for those of you that enjoy the audio-only version of the podcast, we are available in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn and Stitcher, and now Spotify and Amazon as well. We're available everywhere. You can reach out to us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at the subvert pod that's at the subvert pod and also a new blog that is going to be launching soon you can subscribe today if you'd like to receive some insightful articles from our uh lovely co-host aaron over here it's the subvert podcast.com forward slash blog subscribe to that there will be a newsletter available so you can get his uh amazing articles when they come out uh, i'm looking forward to those i've already started reading some of them so i think it's it, it's gonna be good um that's all the time <laughs> that's all the time we have for this week and remember before we go we're all fucked up so let's be fucked up together we'll see you next time